Thank you, Tim, for passing the gavel. I just wish I had this when my kids were younger. <laughs> they feel important. I wish I hope I can fill in your shoes as well, Tim. You've done a marvelous job. If you think about Tim Griffin's time as his tenure over the past year, record results, financial, membership, internationally, we've we've achieved quite a bit. And I think it's not only due to Tim, but the whole organization, the staff of IDA, Rob, your organization is got to be the top quality. You know, it's kind of funny. I said Steve was going to cry tonight, but <laughs> at least Annie did, not Steve. But I hope I don't. It's been an emotional week. Um, anyway, I do have a script here to say, uh, but I do like Tim. Over our 2,200 plus members, you're sustaining our success. Fantastic job. I just hope I can fill your shoes. And as Tim said, you know, our, the, the board of directors, you know, we've got a strategic plan. We've got a lot of things. We've had political issues this week. We've had a lot of things. And the staff really and the organization and the board of directors does all they can to support this organization. And I hope you appreciate their efforts. So for my theme for this year, I've chosen District energy, combined heat and power, local solution, global impact. And uh, just like everyone else, I have to stay on script. Rob, Rob told me I needed to. <laughs> he said I would be better prepared. I did prepare, but I am going to read if you don't mind. I hate reading it, but I hope you can bear with me only a couple minutes. But this reflects what I've seen in the world with solar turbines. I've traveled in many places around the world. and helping deploy cleaner, more efficient energy. And I think that's important for everybody to recognize. Um, District Energy CHP is a, is, is a very a local investment driven by local needs and resources. And when done properly, it solves both local energy challenges and contributes to the global environmental progress, reduces emissions, and conserving our valuable resources. And I don't think anybody can argue with that. And I think that's key to the local solution, a global impact. And that's my goal, is to make sure that we spread our message to everyone out in the globe. In just a few months, I've traveled to a number of places. I've been to Scandinavia. I've been to Southeast Asia. I've been to China. I've been to, and I'll be going to India. Vern, I'm coming to Germany in a couple of weeks. So, um, but when you look around there, you look around the world, uh, each country is vastly different in culture and climate. Northern climates with heating, but the Middle East with cooling. But you see the challenges and opportunities to build a more re robust and resilient local energy systems are very common across all nations. So as we work together to deploy more district energy, CHP, which is our Swiss Army knife, uh, in more cities and campuses, I was encouraged by optimism and guidance of our keynote speaker, Brian DC, yesterday remember what he told us, to be optimistic and realize that we can make a difference. So it's obvious that IDEA has an important role to play in shaping the energy future we need. And now is the time to inform, advance, and connect with mayors and local governments to help them take action. And as was mentioned earlier, we have our Markham's mayor, Frank Scarpetti, one that recognizes and gets us, and we welcome him and hope we have in the next meeting a number of other mayors as well. You know, over the first few, few days, we've, we've shared valuable techniques and business solutions. I mean, if you look at this program, I, you can't deny that you've had to learn something at this conference. I mean, Laxmi and the team put together just some exceptional programs. And it's, you just look at everybody and the amount of information that is shared and openly shared with enthusiasm and with the ability to help each other out. And that's what I think is great about this organization. And we're building international relationships to enhance collaboration and strengthen our joint efforts to develop better policies and enact smarter regulation and to attract both public and private investment. By working together, we can help each other to educate government leaders and policymakers to inform and advise local governments and utilities and make the case for district energy and CHP. If you look, look at the larger trends across the the U.S. and in other places, uh, more distributive energy is becoming more of the 
the norm and suppose of big, large central plants. Um, and that makes it more efficient, right? Using more local distributive energy. So even if you look at our organization, we're working with the utilities now. I can remember just only a few years ago that the electric utilities were really our foe. Now they're becoming our friends. And I think that's something our organization is trying to do and with Rob's leadership. I think we can accomplish that. And even now, the grid is being modernized to, to enable a two-way flow of electrons. But we need to make the, the case for integration of thermal energy. You thought about even Duke University in saying, well, I don't want to burn fossil fuels. But they don't realize the heat comes from that fossil energy. You can't have renewables for everything, even though renewables are a fantastic solution to our, to our economy. So we know that that'll play a, a, a continuing uh, CHP in the district energy to balancing that capacity of intermittent renewables. And that's something that we need to work with. And now you recognize the current administration in Watson has elected to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement. We're, not, we're still up, we're seeing an upswelling of engagement and support from mayors, governors, and communities, businesses. I live in California. Governor Brown flipped his nose at, at uh, President Trump. But hey, you know, everybody has their thing. But again, we have to realize that businesses want to be sustainable, and we have those solutions that we can offer. And I'm hoping that during my tenure that we continue to advance our solution to everyone, governments, businesses, campuses, universities, and the like. So it will be important for IDEA to remain committed to energy efficiency and smart use of resources to help foster growth of district energy in cities, communities, and campuses, not only across North America, but the entire globe. One of the key attributes of IDA is that our members are committed to helping each other, as you could have seen it today and discussed by everyone here. It's working smarter to achieve higher levels of efficiency and reliability and to collaborate on solving technical and business issues. As a community, I've found tremendous resources and expertise that has helped me in my job, helped me grow personally and professionally, and has proven very valuable for my company, opening new doors for opportunities. And on a personal level, ID has provided opportunities to get to know people in my profession, to build relationships, friendships, and that has really been the icing on the cake. And even my wife, Sandy, who I've been extremely supportive of me, is now in the fold of everyone, and she always now won't miss coming to a, an ID or an organizational meeting. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to serve as the chair of the ID Day. I welcome your suggestions, ideas, and thoughts on what opportunities we might focus on together in the months ahead. I think the next 12 months may offer a historic opportunity for us as members of IDA to achieve local solutions that make a global impact. Thank you for your confidence you have placed in me, and I'll do my best. to represent this association. So Jim, thank you for your hospitality, and I turn it back over to you.